Hey Carter, welcome to the channel, man. Hey Carter, how are the volumes, man? I changed to this. Check. Like check. Thank you for the ladder. about set here guys to start uh, rendering out a uh, marketing illustration beta render for Pudge for the insanity set for Dota 2. Run a quick uh, region render test. Thanks, Elaine. Yeah, I've been setting up uh, the lighting rig earlier today and different passes, the depth pass and the auto pass and then the frame passes so that I can uh, separate the arms, the foreground elements and then the background elements and do that whole fogging thing that I showed you before. Oh, it's not, it's not a Jason set, man. <laughs> it wouldn't mask. And uh, we did some tests already uh, earlier in the week. 
And we had this guy running in game, so we'll do that a little later tonight and show you guys how it looks in game. Got the intestines uh, jiggling around as he walks. That's great. Here's our light setup. <laughs> I think I think I used way too many lights, but um, I had to do it really fast, so I just started adding them and adding them and adding them until I got what I wanted. You know, uh, I think I only had about two. Two hours, three hours to do the quick test and some quick setup so that I wouldn't have to do them live on the on the stream for you guys. So we can just start painting and get some renders out. And you guys don't have to see me, you know, putting all the lights and testing them out and small viewports and all that stuff. All for you guys. <laughs> can never have enough light sources. Yeah, that's true. Unless you're running on a slower rig, then you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be sitting there a long time waiting for stuff to render just to see one little light you moved. I'm running a pretty strong rig here, so it's not take that long. Just really easy. And I have quite a bit of lights here, and I have some SSS materials which take a bit to render, so it's running pretty good. Which one of these uh, spotlights will render out? You can see here you go. You got the cone. So I'm using a lot of these guys to get a lot of the rim shading uh, exactly where I want it. Instead of having it like an overall rim rim uh, lighting on Pudge from the angle that I'm rendering at, which is this one. So with this specific light, I will get uh, rim lighting just across some elements up here. And if I want to change those out, I just edit the light a little bit. But I keep the lighting that I set up everywhere else, like the rim lighting on the arms, <clears throat> and the reflectedness on the, on the blade, and all those other, um, all those other things. Hi, Nineless. Welcome to the channel. Let's see. Render out our lit pass right now. Hopefully, it won't slow down the the stream. We're gonna do an actual render to texture, PGA. Good. And hmm. Other, you know. Yeah, why not? Pull down things a little bit, but all right. We're doing at fourteen hundred. That's right. Hundred. All right. Try these settings set. We're on the right angle. Well, yep. See, exercise is really nice. It saves uh, whatever camera angles you're messing around with. Uh, say, you know, you want you want your model to be like right there, and then you move around to fix something in the back, and you lost your space that you had. You can just simply. Um, here, you can see the difference. Say this is the angle we want. We middle click up here, move around, fix that thing or whatever, re click there, and it saves your spot of uh, four for, uh, keyframes here to, to save the camera at. Super awesome. Really neat. Alright, let's try and render this current pass. This is shrinking the image uh, one by four so that it doesn't do the whole screen. We'll show us our. Our capture process. Real time over here. That's a Sodia. Thanks, man. Yeah, the, I, I added some cuts around the the mask to kind of like you know uh, pull it away more from that Jason look that you know that that we don't specifically want to get attached to too much. <laughs> Makes me paint a higher quality with the music. <laughs> Thanks, man. You guys are listening to Ronald Jenkins right now. Really talented guy, I love his music. Um, the scale down version is 1x4 on this viewport that we're seeing right now, but it's actually rendering at 2600 by 2600 
Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure um, Soft Image kind of took a lot of the computer bandwidth there to start the final gathering process. Is it still cutting out, guys? Square. Come on, Final Gather. Do I have the bandana on? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm wearing a bandana right now. How'd you know? I also have a head crab hat over here somewhere. <laughs> I will not put that on today, though. <laughs> Almost done. So it finished, it finished the final gathering and it's doing the actual uh, render pass right now on top of that. Uh, final gathering is uh, bouncing lights off of images, which is instead of using lights, it uses colors from a picture and it shoots them in 360 degrees to the to the model and it lights the, the color pass with those colors so you get more uh, more bounce colors and uh, more realistic feel to, to the model. It also creates a little bit of um, Inbeat occlusion, which is like self-shadowing inside the crevices of the model. And then on top of that, I have all the lights that you guys saw on that setup, and it combines both of those to make this uh, beauty pass right here. <laughs> it's going, man. It's uh, I think we're over 50% right now of uh, the render that's gone through. It should go a little faster. This doesn't show up upload on the actual view uh, with a big difference. You know, we see the power moving around, 26%. So that's 26% of the final render, or the the, uh, the render pass on top of the final gather. The whole final gather 100% already went through. I have, a, I have a bandana or a do-rag, and I got a supporter going right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, audio should be nice and smooth now. This past one doesn't take as much as uh, CPU. Slowing down a little bit. Oof, bad time to check uh, the front page of Twitch. Let's pause that. Let the render go through.
<laughs> my god, this is rendering a little slower than I thought. But I do have quite a few uh, programs open. I got uh, the broadcast software, broadcast on Twitch. I have Skype open, Explorer, so I can see the dashboard of the chat for you guys. Optimage, Photoshop, uh, iTunes for the music for you guys. Hmm. And Dropbox for. I change this. The screen's not black anymore, is it, guys? And open up what I've shot so you can watch something instead of waiting for this. Um, will I make Spirit Breaker items? Uh, Lane's asking on the chat. Absolutely, I want to get to some Spirit Breaker after I finish the sets that I have started on the back end. So that's probably a couple of sets away, because I gotta finish a PL, a Phantom Lancer set, and another Secret set. Oh, actually I have a Skeleton set that I started halfway through it as, as well. Oh man. But yeah, Spirit Breaker's my hero too. Yeah, I'll make some badass ones. He's by far my most used hero. Everybody thinks I play Pudge. <laughs> I haven't played him in a long time. Uh, so earlier in the day I set up a bunch of different passes, so you guys want to, wouldn't have to sit through uh, watching that stuff. Uh, but here's one of them. This is the depth pass that I'm going to use uh, later um, when we're putting together the Photoshop image. And this pass is actually going to be used for... Um, in combination with a plugin uh, to add, add a depth of field, which is going to blur out the back end things, or I can control which part I want to blur out the middle one, which is the grays, the whites, which are in front, or the darker grays that are in the back. So, Photoshop can, when I bring this texture in, Photoshop allows me to decide which area I want to blur out, kind of like a camera would. Let's check in our render progress. 9%. Yeah, Alright, it's moving along. Uh, which skeleton? Uh, skeleton King. And then here's another path that I did that is just the color pass. And then here's another pass which is just the entire model so I can cut them out from the uh, any backgrounds and then add a background behind it um, at the very end. And then I did uh, a pass with just uh, the arms and the intestines, so that I, if I need to select them, you know, when I start kind of like fogging out the background or blurring, you know, the foreground, and I want to get more attention onto the hook or the sword or the the uh, the, the blade, the machete, um, I can select it here really easy and then map out whatever other effects I have around the, without ha uh, messing the other things up. And then the mask and a couple of other separate things. Let's just speed up our work pro our, uh, our our process as we select things and blur things and paint around them. We can block those things out, mask them out. So uh, these masks are really useful. Just uh, anyone you know making beauty renders really um, gets all their items into separate uh, frames or masks. And use them to uh, black things out. I should have rendered this before, but I wanted to show you guys the render. I well, like watching, watching a software render some more uh, realistic you know, lighting scene.
That's Asodia. Um, you're linking uh, Twitch.tv live workshopper? <laughs> what are you linking that? Oh, here, um, I'll type on the chat and I'll set that it's uh, 9 o'clock right on the dot right now. <laughs> I've been working a lot, man. I got a Sapporo uh, beverage to accompany me right now. I guess while we're in here, we can start doing some uh, hard shadows. While we wait for our render to finish. is actually thrown down my photoshop so I double clicked when I actually didn't double click. That's okay though. <laughs> my photoshop slowed down right now.
Yeah, that's the pyro beer. It's good stuff, man. Check on our render. On um, soft homage. Oh my god, finished! Yeah! Alright, uh, the stream should be running really smooth now. Let me know, guys. Where do you add it to it? Can I copy this? Like the frame. Right on top. Lid pass, color pass, and some harsh shadows that I started painting. Right now I'm, uh, I'm going to be painting really quick and dirty some, uh, some shadows, some hard shadows. I think they should be... Honestly, they'll look just as good if I do them in here really quick. More position than going into uh, a 3D package and re-rendering that out until I get them perfect where I want the, the shadows to be. That would be pretty good, yeah. Uh, where the shadows should end up. Making happening. So these guys that we cut up earlier. Yeah. Or 
shot over here. Start brushing stuff right in. We'll blur the, the edges a little bit later, but right now we're just painting all the hard shadows first. his face change All the shadows are gonna help us uh, bring, f you know, kind of br bring out the the forward, the front elements, like the hook, the shadow, the intestines, which are our items for uh, for Dota 2. So those are the things we want to really emphasize in the picture. So I'm using the shadows to, uh, to help guide the eye. Yeah. Add more of the default punch.
Uh, the song playing right now is called uh, Dirty, spelled with an E, by uh, Ronald Jenkins. Get more exciting real soon, I promise. <laughs> but we need these shadows to They're gonna help us big time when we start uh, combining them with our renders. I've been suggested to increase the 3D effect of the belly stitches. Uh, all these guys over here? Yeah, absolutely, man. Good call. Uh, definitely when I have this more lighting into it, it's gonna help. And then when I do my highlight pass on top of this, that will be on top of the diffuse and other layers, uh, I'll definitely bring those guys out a little bit more with a little shine on the edge. We'll get there for sure, man. Thanks for the suggestion. Mask mask. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, those masks make things so much easier.
And I'm gonna add way more shadows in here after the light pass. I think the light pass actually adds quite a bit. Yeah, but even more so that we get those, just the, the eyes to poke through the mask. Inside of the ears, lit up way too much. Made that a little bit. What else we We have a mask. Oh, actually, one thing I kept the same. Not that lazy, are we? Our lighting pass is really dark here anyway, so we don't have to do much to this sword. If anything, we need to make, make it brighter later on when we apply this mask on, say. Those bandages need to pop out a bit more. And that sword might be too bright. We'll get there. <laughs> there you go, Elaine. Zoom in the boob for you. We've got progress. You want to crash and lose everything? Hell no. Default punch stuff. Not interested in showcasing this too much. more of the shadow. All right, I mean the shadow side 37%. So I mean we can always go stronger with it and then grab a really big brush like this down like maybe 25% or so. We can start erasing away at the bottom, see? Just like that. We'll start getting a more realistic shadow across edges and things like that. So we'll do that once we'll have our lighting pass on there. But right now we're just making everything a really harsh dark. Secret project working on three more punch skins. <laughs> Maybe one more, but then I gotta move on to more heroes. I don't even play punch that much. Or haven't in a long time. Actually, I think that's what of the map. A little bit of these crevices. it would create a little bit of a shadow anyway.
duplicate our layer. I'm gonna jump onto my screen. My layer system. Minimize the chat, we'll be able to see it for a little bit, but be able to see. Uh, you can see up here at the top, I set up a group. Holds all the masks that I made earlier in uh, Soft Image. That is allowing us to work really fast through the shadows and later on through the fog and any other color things that we want to do. I separated some of the items so I can just select them really quickly and cast them out or match them in. Whole, whole body so I can cut it, out, cut it out and then put a background behind them. And then a death pass, which we'll use to um, add a little bit of a blur effect in Photoshop. Uh, almost, almost the last thing we do. So those are those are our frame layers, and we have our color layers. So here's the straight color texture that I grabbed, and here is our raw render from Soft Image with some lights, and then our new layer that I made for some heart shadows. Which are a bit too light, you know, not dark enough, and there's no gradient on them yet, so we'll fix that. And down here, I duplicated my lit layer and my color layer, just in case I need to duplicate them and throw them on top with another filter layer to get some, some more colors to show up on the reds, or um, more, more likely the reds. We're gonna push the red team a bit, since uh, this guy in game, the whites and the reds really show up um, uh, from the top game view. So we're gonna try and push those colors as much as we can. So that'll be great. Mm -hmm. Go back to our single screen here. <laughs> it's not starting. All right. Oh, I need a drink. Oh boy, Boxer. Well, here it is, man. Showing you how to uh, make some nice images with Photoshop and using your model at the same time. So yeah, pick some, pick some tricks up. Try it again, man. Let's see what we. So next, I'm gonna make two layers. Uh, one layer for my brights and one layer for my my darkest darks using our lit um, render pass that we did in Soft Image. Let me just duplicate this layer and put it on top. So we're gonna lose our shadows for a bit, but that's okay. Make this multiply layer. Our levels with Control L is a shortcut. We just want to bring the darks, all the whites. to see have a multiple of And then let's make sure that we're not adding any extra color to the image. We'll bring down the saturation and that new multiply layer that we... We're just bringing in some really harsh darks right now. That's it. Give it some color. A little bit.
Oh, let's duplicate our lit layer, our raw lit layer again. Bring that back on top. And then we, we just want to grab our lights from here. Using our levels. I'm gonna do the opposite thing. Right. Bars. Right side. Now we apply light and pass on it. Now we're gonna duplicate our color map and put that on top of these layers. We're we'll trying to get some color back into the. Usually doing normal. Uh, the trick is figuring out which multiplier works best with your other four layers that we have right now. Arcs back in.
Now we're going to add some uh, reds to all of our shadows and try and push that red and white theme that we were talking about earlier. And we'll erase some of the intestines so we can get those guys to pop out a bit more. They're important. Guys, we're trying to showcase. Gonna erase away the edge, a lot of these pieces. A lot more natural in the shadow. Especially over here on the bright stuff. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, we have like this self, you know, self, uh, Pollution kind of vibe going on already. It's just a really simple black texture or you know black layer with multiply pass on it and low opacity. Really easy to make shadows. Go through no perspective a little bit and uh, volumes so you know where the shadow will fall. just by erasing away some of the opacity in some of these areas. It's starting to feel a little more believable.
からまあ。Most. I try to get past us away. There are fake shadows that we painted in. Way better now, yeah? Uh, thanks, Nihilus. Thanks for stopping by. Come back later, will you? Secret project is not for Pugna. Nope. <laughs> nice try though. Alright, uh, let's make a new layer and we're gonna paint in some highlights. Air highlight. So the hook rope is made of actual flesh? Somebody's asking on the chat? Uh, yeah, so the idea on this uh, set is um, his intestines are coming out of his belly and wrapping around him and then he's attaching it to the hook this uh, hay hook with, uh, with a blade on the front and he, he throws it and that's how he pulls people in with his intestines instead of a rope. This mask is getting really, really white. The layers were messing with some of the colors, huh? some values. I'm gonna make a mask. Uh, I think it's that's our first lit layer. I'm gonna erase away some of this lighting. Let the colors come through a bit more. There we go. Right now I'm going through all my layers and I'm trying to find uh, all the layers that are really blowing out the mask because it's already white. Thus so you start doing screens and all these other passes, color variations, you start multiplying the whites. So we'll just go through all those layers and erase all the guys that are multiplying, that are going over our white. That seems to be Alright, let's paint some highlights. There. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Dark Ascension. Appreciate the comments, man.
So right now these highlights are gonna look way too uh, bright, but we just want to kind of like block them in. And then we can start erasing them away, depending on where they're hitting. Can even cheat and kind of like add some geometry that is not actually even there. That will make the model look way better. If you've been on this channel before, you guys know we cheat all the time. They're good. Some parts we want to emphasize the cuts that our lighting and render is kind of hiding a little bit, so we'll bring that stuff right back out. Let people in the face with it. Look at the detail! <laughs> but not everywhere, because then it gets too crazy. We don't want to overcomplicate. High flow. The eyes gotta rest sometimes. Give, give the eyes some places to rest. So, you know, darken some areas down here, and in here we need to darken some more and bring those intestines out with more highlights and paint that color back on top of there and add more red to it and keep adding and adding and adding so we get something we really want. Uh, yes, the liveworkshop.com is where these videos will be hosted, as well as tutorials, featured tutorials, and featured items for Dota, Team Fortress 2, and more games after that. Uh, so yeah, the, the website is actually still fairly new. I'm still working on it. Uh, I haven't officially launched it, but you can definitely head over there to liveworkshop.com and check it out. There's already quite a bit of things up there and other broadcasts. More Dota 2 sets and... Even tutorials on how to get him into the game. I'm sorry, Brambler. I don't understand your question. Uh, the website will host uh, tutorials for people to be able to watch on streams. Uh, they'll have free tutorials and uh, premium tutorials. So you'll be able to log on there and uh, save all the tutorials you want and they'll be saved under your, uh, your account. They'll be available soon. Working on it right now. Uh, 
Uh, the tutorials will range from having, you know, beginner levels to expert levels. And everywhere in between. Modeling, concepting, illustrations, speed renders, rigging, tutorials. I'll show you guys how to do everything. Again, this is too, way too bright down here, but we'll just erase away. So we have the markers. Now. Here we go, before and after. Definitely helping out. Especially when we polish this stuff. Yeah, we want to bring more attention to the highlights. Highlight this a little. It's definitely uh, all in-game. I'll jump in-game and I'll show you guys the model as well if you guys want to see it. And see how he moves and everything in-game. But yeah, this is one of the last things we need to do before we submit it. Uh, Brombriar is asking if I'm working solo, if I'm looking for people to join uh, the website. Um, um, I will be running the, webs the website and I'll be featuring uh, artists that will create content and sets. And the website will actually help promote your your Dota 2 or Team Fortress 2 or any other game asset uh, that you want to get out there for the public. So you'll, you'll have the th model feature just like we have right now, uh, Pudge Pants, the uh, Bloodstained Bridges showcased in a 3D viewport on the front page, which you can rotate and you can zoom in and you can check out the, the, the item really closely. 
Uh, so that's one way that we'll be promoting other people's um, sets for Dota. And we'll have links on their t for their rating page so people can rate them up higher and they get a better chance of getting their items into the game. I think it's going to be uh, really exciting for the community. Did that answer your question? Uh, Red Wing, on the side right now, the rating page for the Pudge um, Bloodstained Bridges is set there as an example for future sets for um, other artist sets to be featured. Uh, so uh, as soon as I submit this guy, I'll definitely update the website with him on the front so you guys can rate um, the new models that come out. But yeah, basically he's there for a placeholder right now and, uh, for and to show people you know, the, the examples of uh, future content. I'm gonna speed up here a little bit and draw this a little bit faster. Then we'll race away a little bit later. Like. I'm being a little too careful on these edges. Let's just, just go, just draw. Rambauer, uh, you can definitely, I'll have a submission page for uh, getting featured content into the um, live workshop. So that, that'll be how you can submit your stuff to get featured on the website. But I mean, the forums are set up there as well, so you can visit the forums. And uh, you can post your work in progress, and you get some feedback from artists and myself.
somebody posted a, a Dragon Knight set a couple days ago. And I just actually did a quick sketch over for them and uh, pasted some feedback for it, so they can improve the model. So yeah, check that out. Or post if you're interested in some feedback. You're welcome, no worries. those masks. How long have we been working on this? Uh, we started about an hour ago, I think. And actually a lot of that time we were waiting for the render to get finished. Uh, the lit render, which is... the color pass, and this is the lit render that we're waiting on. And this is where we're at right now on touching it up. So, I don't know, if I had to guess, probably... 35 minutes? 40 minutes? Here we take. And I mean, this is a really low poly mesh. Most of it, anyways. And I'm just working really large. But this is gonna be, you know, about the A size. Man, it's got a lot of little things over here. They were filed before something horrible happens. More color, I think.
back up our work. Uh, yeah, I'm using an Intuos 4 right now. I haven't really uh, tried out the Synthic too much, so I can't say whether it's actually worth it or not. Uh, I'm pretty happy with Intuos 4 though. Oh, I think, sorry, I didn't see your question there. Um, when did I start the project? Uh, it's kind of hard to say because I had the mask done a long time ago and then I reworked it to make it more uh, acceptable for the lore. Uh, so that was months ago and I waited for a while and then I had the machete that I started I think a couple weeks ago and I just worked on it on and off every night or every third night or something like that. And then I came up, uh, the last thing that I, I came up with was making the intestines which we're going to be replacing the hook, or the, the rope, that th he throws the hook with. So that's the last thing I, I made, and if you want to see that made, it's actually on our, our, on our broadcast archives on the website. Uh, so you can see that process too. But yeah, I'd say, I don't know, it hasn't been that long. I think the models, the new models that I made, like the, the hook, the matchet, the hatchet, and the new arm with the nails in it, uh, I probably did those in four or five days. With UVs and everything. Quite fast, yeah. Intestines were, were a bit more work. So the rigging and getting them to jiggle in game and the testing going to the game and back out and all that. But they look great. I'll show you that in game later. with some um, lights down here. We have a mask for this Go somewhere. The fire thing. Now down here, um, it appears that our render picked up our lower polygon mesh for the hook. So I'm just going in right now and erasing that low, way too low poly hook for this beauty render. the very outsides that it picked up because it was hiding underneath I think. Alright, we'll fix it.
and Afriak, yeah, it's a uh, you can't really add jiggle joints yourself. You have to go off by what the model has. Uh, so what I did was I actually used some of the bones that run the apron at the bottom there that swings around. Show you guys in three games. So this guy's down here. Uh, in game, they actually jiggle around with movement, not with animation. They're simulated. So I rigged. Part of the intestines to some of the bones there's like three rows of bones down here and uh, i rigged some of the weights um to those guys so when you see pudge moving around and walking you, you'll see this guy's jiggle around a little bit worked pretty well pretty happy with how it came out Play in game uh, and a little bit later uh, this is xsi i used it to uh to do the render paths for this guy Oh. oh no, we're drawing in the wrong layer. Just mudge this guy's around a little bit. Hide some of the seams. Naturally occur with really low poly stuff. Back to our highlights. Well, the render is a uh, mental ray, but it's using a uh, soft image as the application. Really find that result if you look it up.
do some bandages. A lot of highlights on this guy, Jesus. I have to take a better shape. All the highlights we just painted in. And we're not done yet. Paint some quick detail into some of these areas. Why they're kind of, kind of like turning, you know. That's just here.
Make his nipples purple? <laughs> no man, I don't think I'll do that. That was punching game though. Making this uh, test render last night. Well, I get the lighting rig that I actually use from here to start using on uh, this pledge render. Here's some quick backgrounds that I. What do I think is the best way to get involved in the game development industry without spending much money or learning? Or learning. Um, if it's, um, they ask me this a lot, and uh, you know, like what schools are the best? And I know schools are really expensive, and I know most of the schools don't actually have the teachers you need teaching you the stuff you need to learn to actually get a job in the game industry. So, I mean, there is a few, I'm sure, but most of them are just not any good. <laughs> um, so the way you can do it is, you know, create create a position for yourself. Um, learn, learn on your own. You know, join forums, get inspired by artists on CG Talk and Polycount and all these communities that are out there. You know, get a, get feedback from those guys. Learn how they do their their models, their results. Copy them. Try and redo what they just did, learn what the process that it takes to get there. Once you know that stuff, you can start creating your own stuff with your own style. 
you know, you just need to learn the technology and the, the, the pipeline of how 3D and how these uh, applications work. So that would be the cheapest way to go. Uh, but, I mean, you need to put in the time. There's no way around that. You need to practice, 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 practice. And get feedback from people in the industry and artists. Be the cheapest way to do it. I'm not gonna use these sparks, but or just for the image. I didn't do his eyes or his mouth, obviously. I have to get a good shader for this. Let's hold our backdrop for it. something more dota oriented back later hi Genghis welcome to the channel uh, Genghis is asking how the render was done um, so here's a uh, soft image Here's our low poly image that we use for the render. And here's the light setup, all these little orange icons and spotlights, point lights. We're used to uh, create our quick render pass. You can see here real quick. Let me turn down the quality so it renders faster. A little preview for you guys. There it is. So it was quick and dirty, and I was just gonna touch it up in Photoshop and make it an illustration. Instead of making, you know, all the hardcore materials and make it like a cinematic kind of thing. Which I don't need to do because it is a one angle shot, you know, I don't need to look at it in 360. Uh, like you would in a cinematic. So that's why I did a quick render shot and just painting over in this one, one frame. And we don't have the time to spend days on this piece, you know, I just want to finish the marketing for it, making something really nice from one angle and then uh, use that one piece to uh, showcase thumbnails or all the different pieces for the Dota 2 set, for the arm, the head, the intestines, all those things I can cut up. 